Hello, welcome to Lemon Studios, where we talk anything and everything entertainment. I'm, of course, Lemon himself, Zeke Lamont, and this is my review for episode six of The Last of Us. But before we get to that, let's get the housekeeping out of the way. I'm going to need you to hit that subscribe button. I'm going to need you to leave a like on this video. I'm going to need you to comment below and let me know what your thoughts are on episode six. I would greatly appreciate that, as all of those help me grow into my YouTube career. Now, with all that out of the way, let's get into the review. And if you see something moving right here, it's my dog, Crash. He's a very sleepy boy today. He's a very sleepy boy. Man, this was another very good episode. So, spoiler alert, is it good? Yes, it was very, very good. Um, but I will also put this in the realm of, like, an episode four. Like, if I was to rank the episodes, it's... I'm not going to actually rank all six. But it's, it's in that realm of episode four, where... You know, it's great. I mean, every episode of The Last of Us has been really, really good, right? But, like episode four, is it the most memorable episode? No. Is it the episode you're going to talk about, like episode three, or the pilot, or episode five? No, it's not one of those. I literally said every other. Like, there's one, three, and five, and then there's four and six, which, you know, again, they're good. But not, not the top tier. They're just not the top tier. Um... And I like the setup of it. I like the whole structure of it. Because it starts off with Joel and Ellie. They're at this cabin and they're looking for directions to get to where Tommy is. And they just drop this bombshell. And they're so like numb to, to every person ever. And they're like, yeah, no, these people are bad. And he goes, hey, if your brother went that way, he ain't, he's not alive. He's dead. Like, I, I'm sorry, but he's dead. And Ellie's trying to keep this tough facade on because she knows Joel is struggling with that. She goes, nah, I scared him. He's scared. And then they walk out and Joel basically has a panic attack. And because of just the thought that he lost Tommy because he lost his daughter and that's been looming over him ever since, you know, from the beginning. And then he lost Tess. And uh, then just the thought that he lost his brother. He's like, God, man. And now him and Ellie are starting to really, really connect. Um, this is where, you know, some very, very minor nitpicks because they jump three months later. And the fact that <laughs> they didn't talk about what happened with, uh, Sam for three months, that she, she sat on, I tried to help Sam for three months. Just, I, I didn't really buy that. I feel like that was a conversation that like happens like immediately afterwards. And I also would like them to talk about Sam and Henry a little bit more too, because like they got really close and Joel was making plans to, you know, for them to travel with them to Jack's, well, not to Jack's, to Wyoming. Um, and it was just that one scene and that's it. But I get it. There was a lot of other things in there too. Then they get to Jackson and then there was the whole setup of, Hey, we got to take all these precautions and making sure that she's safe and all that. And they had the dog and I was really worried Joel was going to kill the dog because y'all know me, I'm a dog lover and I just don't like seeing dogs die. It's the, it's the same reason why I have yet to see John Wick. I just don't want to see dogs die. Uh, <laughs> but no, everything was fine. And then they get the Jackson and we meet Maria. I'm going to be completely transparent here. I am a fan of the game. I, I love the game. It's been a minute since I've played and watching the show has actually made me pick up the game and started playing it again. I haven't gotten to where we meet Maria and, the, and we're in Jackson, but I don't remember Maria being this annoying and judgy. Like, I just don't. <laughs> um, it, I don't think that she's changed that much, but she, like, really bothered me. But I'm really having a hard time remembering if she bothered me this much in the game as well, because it does make sense. Joel wasn't the greatest guy, but <laughs> um, when she's having the conversation with Ellie, I'm going to start doing some jumping around. I'm going to go back later because there's there's another scene that really bugged me, but again, it's very nitpicky. It's not going to judge the episode um, that she's cutting Ellie's hair and she's like, hey, you need to watch out if you follow. And Ellie's like, you know, Tommy did the exact same things Joel did, right? And she goes, well, it... it it was just such a dismissive comment of like, well, Tommy was following Joel. I mean, Tommy doesn't have to listen to Joel. Tommy can have his own brain. So you can just go make excuses for Tommy, but not for Joel. Like, I, I don't know that, that whole, that whole, uh, scene really bugged me for a little bit, but I did like that. We got to see Ellie finding out about Sarah. So I'm willing to swallow that 
just because of seeing Ellie going, oh, okay, he had a daughter. That makes so much sense for the way he's been treating me lately. Um, and now to go back. Now, you don't need to explain it, but it really, it really bugged me. Like, it really bugged me because we established Ellie can't swim and she doesn't know a lot. And she, do, and she did go to school. She went to school. The fact that she knew how to drive, uh, to ride a horse by herself really bugged me. Granted, they could have showed her climbing on like, all right, here's how you ride it uh, steadily. And then could have kept going and that could just got cut in the, uh, in the editing room. But I don't know. It bugged me. I was just like, oh, so she just knows how to ride a horse, but she can't, but she don't know how to swim. Okay, whatever. <laughs> that minor, minor, minor nitpick. Now to now to keep it moving. Um, I liked how Joel got to the conclusion of how to get rid, not to get rid of Ellie, but to hand her off to Tommy. Again, this arc area is a little fuzzy to me, but I do remember that Joel's just trying to hand her off. He's still trying not to be attached. He's he's still trying not to be attached in the game. In the game, he's still trying not to be attached, and he realizes he's getting attached. So therefore, he's just trying to throw off the Tommy in any way. In the scene when he's like, "Look, I can't hear. There was a kid that I could easily killed, easily killed, but she needed to help me. A fourteen-year-old girl needed to help me to survive. Otherwise, I was going to die. I keep falling asleep. I keep struggling. I just stand there. I." I'm not there. I, I want her to get there alive. Like he's, he truly believes to protect her is to hand her off to Tommy as opposed to in the game. I believe he was just trying to just get rid of Ellie because he didn't want to get close to her anymore. So I really like the handling of that scene in the show a lot more than it did in the game. And then we get to the scene where for the most part it's shot by shot. It's one of the most iconic scenes in the game where they have the confrontation about Sarah and you know, him gonna drop her off with Tommy um, and again seeing that she found out about Sarah and seeing Joel actually really want to protect her but Ellie only catching the end of it I wish we could have seen that more because we see her walking with them for a little bit like from a from a distance I would like to see her like actually pull up when he goes hey you need to get her so we can understand why she's so mad but overall the scene is still great and still leaves that gut punch for the most part and then it kind of just gets deflated. <laughs> well, not deflated. Again, I do like the episode. It's just a lot of things that nitpick me up that I have very, very nitpicks on. And this is what it really is. It's really nitpicks. Because it's just the next day and it's Tommy. And she's like, well, all right. I lost another one. And then when they get to the barn, he goes, yeah, I was just going to leave. But I figured you deserved the choice. And then she just throws it on him, which is a great bit. It's very, very funny. I really, I really liked how quick it was, and then they moved out. I just would have liked something a little bit more in between. I would have liked Joel, because, you know, he just storms off, and then it's the next day, then, like, everything's all good. I would have liked to see what happens after he slams the door on her when he goes, you know, I ain't your dad. Um, and then coming to that conclusion of, okay, yeah. No, uh, I'll choose. We'll let her choose. We'll let her choose. Uh, I would have liked to see that. And then I was like, come on. It was one good because I know what's happening. <laughs> I know what's the future because the other winter episode I do know vividly and I did play the DLC and <laughs> knowing what those are coming to be I was just like oh man just give me one one good episode because like they're actually bonding he's teaching her about football all these other things telling how he's a contractor about the political political uh, teams and all of that and I was like come on just give us one good thing but of course we didn't we see the monkeys and okay the fireflies have obviously moved somewhere bad group comes in Joel gets hurt and he falls and then you see the pain in LA uh, like there's just she's starting to have the panic attack too going I can't lose you I can't lose you I can't lose you I can't lose you because obviously her fear that we learned in episode 5 is that she will die alone so and then we we cut to black now, I wonder how we're going to do this. I wonder if they're going to go linear with the game. And we're going to get the second winter episode. And then we'll get Left Behind. Or what I think they should do is that they do Left Behind next. And then they do the second winter episode. Because I think that makes more sense uh, chronologically without spoiling anything for the future that you have not seen. 
uh, yet. But yeah, overall, again, another very, very good episode. I'm loving the themes, but again, this is the bottom two. It's with four, but you know, it's literally like, the, I mean, those, those first three episodes are like top, top tier television. And the other two are great too, but you know, it's just like, it's a great episode and there's amazing episodes and this is with the greats. Uh, but yeah, again, comment below and let me know what you thought of episode six. Am I being too nitpicky? Because I can see if I am. Uh, please let me know if I am. And, but, you know, do it respectfully. Don't just call me an idiot. Uh, and again, hit that subscribe button for more episodes that are coming on their way here. We got Cocaine Bear review about to hit. And then, of course, Creed 3 and Guy Ritchie's new film also coming out. We got a lot of things heading here to the Lemon Studios. So hit that subscribe button for all the content that's on its way. Mandalorian is about to pick up. And we also got the Lemon March Madness Tournament. That would be in the community page, so be ready to vote for that. We're going to see what's the best pop culture movie of all time. But until then, I will see you here next time at Lemon Studios.